We have a special video for you today. We're gonna go through a ton of names. We're gonna just breeze through them, reevaluate their stock prices. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome into Compounding Capital. My name is Colton. We're gonna take a fundamental approach today. So I know a lot of people are interested in the technicals. This video is probably not gonna be for you. This is just looking over the fundamentals, kind of where I come out with a price target, but we're also gonna line that up with where the experts see the price target as well. Now, if things couldn't get any crazier, we obviously know we have a Fed rate cut on the table, two land wars going on, and another attempt at a Donald Trump assassination. Things are wild, and I just think volatility is going to be here, and crazy scenarios are just going to keep coming through. Now, will this impact the market? Yes, I do think by the end of the year, when we look at what's taking place and kind of the things that are starting to point red when it comes to recessionary signals, I do think there's a probability that we are heading into recession and that we could technically tip into one by the end of this year when we look at everything from the jobs data to government spending, and just overall valuations on the stock market. In this video, I wanna breeze through a ton of names that we've done valuations on and just see where we are today. So let's get into it. Now, the first one up is actually going to be Pfizer. This is one that I've kind of been pounding the table on as it's trading at a forward PE sitting right around 10, 11 times. This is historically a company that trades at 13 and a half times PE ratio. And when it got down to this double dip down here, when it got down to $25, $26, this was a heavily recommended buy for me personally. This was an absolute COVID darling. I've updated my analysis on this, and I think anything under $28 still makes sense in Pfizer. You've had a couple opportunities here to kind of dip in at those levels. You're looking at over a 5% dividend yield, and when we look at total returns, I think this is one that if you buy at the right price, between that $25 to $28 range is ideal. That's where I think you can get a really nice compounder, a nice dividend yield into the portfolio, and some defensiveness when we when we talk about valuation and earnings resilience, meaning regardless what the economy is going to do, you know, this should be a company that's still performing well. Now, they had a tremendous amount of money in earnings when COVID hit, but now that those earnings have dwindled down, we watch kitchen sink after kitchen sink report thrown at the at the investor, dropping from $50 a share down to 25, got cut in half. But this is where I believe the earnings have bottomed. And now with the acquisition of CGen and some of the things that are coming out as of today, looks like there's some positive cancer remedies that Pfizer's putting out there in stage two. And so that's giving a bid under the stock. So technically and fundamentally, this one is definitely interesting at those levels. So keeping my price target of under $28 for Pfizer. How does that compare with what the experts believe? So Schwab has a C plus rating, basically a market perform on Pfizer at the current levels that it's at. MSCI has an A rating for Pfizer. Morningstar has a four star rating for Pfizer. And Morningstar believes that the moat is still pretty wide on Pfizer as well. Most companies have an outperform to a neutral outlook on Pfizer. So I would say overall, sentiment is pretty neutral to positive on this one as well. Now, another one of our callouts that did extremely well was Zoom Video. And we could see here that it was formulating a bottom between 55 and call it $60 a share. Now at $68 a share. As you guys can see here, I had a 43 to right around a $60 stock price. So we got an average around $55 a share, $56 dollars a share that's where i thought it made sense so as the stock was bottoming this was a highly recommended one that i thought had a little bit of ai capabilities that were getting overlooked and when we talk about the consumer now working from home this was one that was benefiting extremely extremely well to the office space not being needed as much well we got to communicate somehow and hold people accountable and we still want that face-to-face -face interaction, which really set up nice for Zoom and kind of a similar situation to where I believe earnings were actually troughing here. Now, for me personally, if you didn't get in in the $55 to $60 range, I probably wouldn't be traced chasing it from here when I think about market conditions, but this would be one that I would still keep on the watch list and I would still have a buy signal probably closer to that $55 range. As we can see here, when we look at Schwab equity rating, it's a B rating hanging out in the 19 percentile. So when they use their metrics of debt, market performance, stock price, basically saying that this is a company that could outperform the overall markets due to where the price is currently trading and the fundamentals that are underneath the company. When we take a look at MSCI, they give it a B rating. Morningstar gives it a four point rating. And now the economic moat is where the biggest concern is for a company like Zoom. Now you have Microsoft Teams and there's a lot of other work platforms that are out there that are kind of taking some of this market share away. Is the is the moat narrowing? And that's why I don't think you this is one you really, really want to chase. 
Um, I think that it has a clean balance sheet. And what you're really investing in in Zoom is that clean balance sheet reinvestment. And they have a tremendous amount of cash to make acquisitions and possibly compete back once again for that moat or do something unique that um, the market may be overlooking. So that's where I thought the value was on this company. Market Edge has a long hold. Most of it is a hold to buy, but I think a majority of the price has already kind of been baked into this move. When we look at Morningstar, currently the stock is trading at $68. They believe fair market value is $89. And when I look at kind of where I think the stock could be trading, I think in the next five to seven years, this could be a $120 stock. So, you know, I'm kind of on the page of Morningstar, but I just wouldn't chase it here. Next up is gonna be Oracle. This is one that I kind of have to take a look at and update. Personally, uh, the valuation is just a little bit nuts on this one, but we're talking about a company that's doing 50, 60 billion in revenue and has a market cap of 470 billion. Uh, it seems pretty, pretty rich when we just look at it from that perspective. Now, this is one I just want to peek at the quarterly report really quick because this one I haven't updated in some time here. So I think where we're seeing the opportunity is going to be that cloud growth. Good top line revenue growth when we look at a mature company, obviously the majority of that coming from the cloud. And that's where being one of the larger hyperscalers out there and kind of having that reputation, we're starting to see the stock absolutely take off here. But what are we noticing? That the earnings are growing pretty quick here. They're doing 89 cents a share now to you know a dollar six for the same quarter. So we're seeing earnings growth, we're seeing revenue growth, we're seeing high demand for their cloud business. But at some point in time we have to look at valuation here, try to wrap our heads around it. For a 26 forward PE on a company that's actually growing its revenue around 10, 15%. This seems pretty reasonable here. When we take a look at the financials, they're doing they're doing a little over 53 billion in revenue. What do they forecast it out to be? What do they forecast it out to do? Looks like pretty strong double digit growth here of 11%. So next year they're projecting them to do uh, 59 billion. So we're gonna update that in our model. And if we base that $6.37 off our earnings here, so the stock's trading at 170 a share, we divide that by next year's $6.70. We're looking at a Ford PE sitting at 25 times on a company growing 15%. It, it's pretty reasonable. I wouldn't say it's super expensive, but this one definitely got away from me. Um, but if they do miss on earnings, this could have a severe, severe whiplash here. When we look at valuation for Oracle, it's not extremely expensive, kind of in line with most of its peers and probably outgrowing most of its peers if we take a look at the growth rate growing a little bit above its peers but also valuation is a little rich so i think everything seems to be pretty much fair baked in for fair market value on this company um, the question is going to be what kind of multiple do we want to put on it we can see here it's trading at nearly 24 times EV to EBITDA, which is pretty rich. Industry standards trading at uh, 18 times. So we'll use an 18 multiple, 19 multiple on Oracle. So updating my analysis here, I just don't know if there's that, that much more upside to the company from my perspective. As I look at this, I think a lot of perfection is being baked in. I think there's a lot of euphoria behind it and I would need a pretty substantial pullback here to possibly get into it around 105. And I'd be looking to average in a little heavier if it broke below 100. Um, and currently the stock's trading at 170. So we're pretty far off on this one. But once again, when we look at kind of their ratings through a Schwab rating, they're rated to B in the 23 percentile. MSCI has them rated as an A, which is a, both of these are saying that they should be outperformers from a market perspective. Uh, Morningstar, I tend to align well with Morningstar when I run my analysis. They have them at a one star, so they're gonna underperform the market here. They're saying that the moat is fairly narrow, so a competitive market overall. And you can see the last time they did their analysis, it was at $155, and they think fair market's at 108. So they see downside risk. Oddly enough, I didn't look at this, and my analysis is pretty much in line with Morningstar star almost to the you know almost identical here and i built some safety into my analysis so to be a few percentage below makes a lot of sense when i look at what morning stars giving for oracle so that's oracle as well so that's just kind of my quick dive in oracle as well obviously as earnings come out we have to update everything on the aspects are they getting better margins are they growing faster than we anticipated so all those things do take into consideration when we run our analysis. Next up, I wanna take a look at Etsy. This is another one that I wanna update. Just got kicked out of the S&P 500, so obviously that's horrible news for the company, 
But I do think there's some uniqueness here when we talk about consumers shopping. Obviously, we all know that the consumer consumes 70% of our economies based on consumption. And I think there could be many players in this field. So I would say the economic moat on this is not anything special, but the uniqueness that they sell on their products is kind of what makes them special here. Etsy's trading at $54 a share, down 3%. We have a high we have a high of 105 and a low of 45 uh, obviously we could see here pretty substantial disparities pretty ugly five-year chart as when we went through covid it was a covid darling and then sold off and i do think it's starting to hit some pretty interesting points here you know as we can see the revenue has been steadily climbing and they do have positive earnings and i basically have a 45 to 50 dollar ideal stock price for etsy so basically we would need it to kind of get to that 52 week low and possibly break below the 52 week low for it to be a hold for me or for it to be a buy for me. So when we look at Etsy, we can see gross merchant sales are coming down 2.1%, but revenues are still inclining uh, 3%. Marketplace grew by 3.8%. Gross, po gross profits grew by almost a percent. And then operating expenses did creep up on them at 5.3%. And net income came down 10%. So some some definitely mixed results when we look at their earnings here and there's a lot of there's a there's definitely a lot of bad things baked into it obviously getting kicked out of the S&P 500 price action alone is pretty scary to look at this company but there is still some interesting fundamentals here because they're still getting active seller they're still getting a nice pop in active sellers that are on the platform in active buyers so we're still seeing a high activity on there we still see activity growing the fundamentals are getting a little jacked up here and they're projecting out that gross merchant sales will decline year over year single digits so there's there's definitely some fear within this company but if you believe if you believe that the consumer is going to remain strong this and we have the holiday seasons i do think that this one could be one that could actually outperform when we look at their long-term debt at 2.2 billion and other liabilities sitting at you know 127 million but we also see that they have over 750 million in cash and cash equivalents and 240 million in short-term securities i would say that the liquidity profile on the company is pretty strong here so they're forecasting low single digit revenue growth for the company so if we look at 2025 if it's a jumping off point of they're going to do right around three billion of revenue and two dollars and eighty cents of earnings if we kind of do some quick paper math on that. So currently the stock's trading at $54. We take that 54, we divide it by the 280 projected out. You're looking at a forward PE sitting at 19 times for single digit growth. I would say that's fairly rich in this environment. There's This is not a company that offers a strong, strong moat. So when we look at Schwab equity sitting at a market perform rating at C, MSCI has an A rating. Morningstar has a four, four star rating. They think the stock's worth closer to $100 a share. I'm gonna keep my price target sitting right around $45 a share. I did update a little bit here, and I do think right around a $40 to $45 price target is ideal for this company, even though Morningstar really is high on Etsy here. At the last time they did this analysis, it was trading around $60 a share. They thought it was worth $100 a share. Next one I want to touch on really quick here is Mosaic. This is the largest producers of fertilizer. They're international. Uh, right now, we're seeing a global slowdown here. And, you know, this price action, when we look at this, tells me that this could be recessionary signals as well. When you got just such demand destruction in commodities, whether it's oil or whether it's things like fertilizer, to me, is kind of like an alarming signal that there is a tremendous slowdown taking place here. And so when I look at a company like Mosaic, is this a company that could hold strong and actually turn things around? Very, very volatile because it does deal with commodities here. When we look at the five-year chart, you guys can see that this stock got as low as $12, as high as 70, and now back down to $25 a share. And this is where the investing art comes into place here. Now, I do want to reiterate that this is a company that pays a 3.3% dividend. So if you're looking for yield, that is definitely a bonus. The payout ratio seems fairly reasonable as we compare it to its peers. It's three of that dividend. So they've been paying that dividend for 12 years and growing it for five. I definitely think that we are in some interesting times where this could be a name that kind of sells off. But I also think this is a very unique name to own because this is an international company. Currencies did impact a lot of their earnings this year. So as we see kind of yields collapse here, we see the dollar weaken. This should benefit and give a little bit of a tailwind to their earnings that's kind of getting overlooked. 
uh, we have a low of $28 a share, a high of 20. Uh, we have a low of $28 a share, a high of 48. As you guys can see, it's trading between 24 and $25. Expected to be a pretty lost year here in 2024, but to kind of stabilize at this point in time, where earnings are probably going to be remain two dollars and forty cents. So if we look at that, it's basically trading at a forward P sitting at 10 times earnings. And I do think that there could be future growth prospects. To me, I do think when this thing starts getting closer to $24 a share, breaks below 24, this is where I think the risk versus reward. It's a lot of sense for Mosaic. When we look at the Schwab rating, they get a B score, which should be a market outperformer. MSCI is an A score, which should be a market outperformer as well. And then we have Morningstar giving it a four-star rating, which makes it a market performance as well. So they did the analysis around $26 a share on September 13th. They believe it's a $40 stock. We factor in a 3.3% dividend reinvestment. So there could be some actual nice returns here on Mosaic. Uh, it's just in a very, very horrible downtrend. Um, no real positive catalyst anytime soon but the business model still seems to be pretty strongly intact. So for me, Mosaic's probably one I'm really gonna take a deep look at and possibly add into if we can find a technical bottom in the stock around that $24, $23 mark. It looks like it's going to retest $24, and if it holds $24, that's where I think we could possibly look at taking a small position in on the stock. Of course, that's just my opinion, not financial advice. That's personally what I'm looking at doing so let's talk through CVS really quick. This is one that I said underneath 56 bucks a share makes a lot of sense. A lot of problems here when we talk about commercial front, storefront pharmacies, whether it's Rite Aid, whether it's Walgreens, and now, CV, now CVS is another one getting hammered here. But the one thing that this has over your Rite Aid and your Walgreens is the fly, flywheel business that CVS has to offer with being attached to Aetna now. So the fact that they own Aetna, People that are on Aetna get a check every month to go to CVS and use for cough drops and cold remedies. So they get a kickback on their insurance premiums to actually shop in the storefront, which I do think will keep the foot traffic going and should still keep it a pretty significant footprint. I do think we still need some sort of storefront pharmacies, regardless of how fast technology is moving and how fast and disruptive Amazon is getting into the space. I do believe that there is still a spot for a company like CVS. Now, what's going to hold CVS up is going to be the Aetna side of the business. And if they can start getting the long-term care facilities like State Street and others working into that flywheel business, this is where I think there's a tremendous amount of potential to unlock for CVS. Now, the, this one pays a 4.55% dividend. Biggest problem I have with this company is with the insurance costs going up. We've watched them pretty much get net margins into a bad, bad position here. They have one to 2% margins and they can't really control the healthcare cost side of things. They only can control raising premiums. So multiple reasons why I like this company. Every month, it's like an annuity. You have those premiums rolling in and when the consumer's strong, their storefronts should do well. Well, right now we're watching a consumer weekend, so their storefronts are getting absolutely hammered but they do have other aspects of their business that should keep this storefront stabilized until things normalize in the economy. So that is one reason why I like them. I like the flywheel business model that they're building, and I still think they're in early stages of getting this on the right track and possibly growing these margins to a safer position. We look at dividend safety, the payout ratio starting to get high, which is a red flag. They've been paying this dividend for 26 years and they've been raising it for the last two. This is something I think is really important for them to do is to make sure the dividend stays intact. So they're doing they're going to probably do everything they can to make sure that they're still considered a dividend aristocrat at this point in time because so many people rely on that dividend and they would lose a tremendous amount of appeal to investors if they slash that dividend or if something got hurt with the dividend. So uh, that would make the stock absolutely tank. I think this is a company you need to tread very careful with. Uh, I would say between 55 and $54 is a good entry point for CVS, but I also think you need to understand the risk of margins possibly going negative of storefronts failing. There's a lot of headwinds dealing with this company that I don't think is necessarily out of the woodwork yet. But on the contrary, it's very hard to find companies that are doing over $300 billion of top line revenue and has the ability to grow margins and build out their business to be a little bit more efficient. Uh, if they're able to do that, we could see exponential uh, earnings growth and stock appreciation on this company. With a percentile ranking in 18 
percentile, which is should be a market outperformer here. MSCI kind of has them as an average rating here at B, which should be a you know, maybe some appreciation. And then Morningstar thinks this is a five-star opportunity. I did think this was a five-star opportunity for the longest time. Management hasn't been able to execute and things of that nature. But I do think at these levels, you have to really take a look at this stock because there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity if things can start going right. It seems like everything has went wrong from management to margins to healthcare costs to the consumer slowing down and storefronts really being a drag. But what I want to point out here is they do believe that this should be around a $93 stock. And they did this on September 4th, so this wasn't that long ago, and it was trading around $59 a share. From those levels, it's actually fallen to $58 a share. You know, So this is one I definitely think you want to keep on your radar if it does start to have a substantial sell-off and start reapproaching that 50, I think that 52-week low of around $52, $53. Uh, if it breaks into the 40s, I, I think I would be adding pretty heavily into this because if we were to distribute the assets apart, if we were to resell Aetna and we were to resell their storefronts, it's got to be worth a tremendous, it's probably worth double of where the currently the stock is trading at a $70 billion market cap. You know, this is probably a company that has a Ford P sitting around 10, 11 times earnings, even though it's saying eight, I don't think that's accurate. I think it's probably closer to maybe nine to 10 times earnings. You know, very reasonably valued, pays a dividend, obviously has some headwinds here, but that's why we're seeing the stock so discounted. This is probably a stock that should be trading closer to $75, $80 a share if margins were a little bit better, if they had not as many headwinds. So this one's pretty heavily discounted. I think it's one that we might wanna take a look at and could be actually forming and we could be seeing a bottom formulating here as well. So wanted to bring up these stocks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the few stocks that I broke down. These are stocks that we've kind of done analysis on throughout the years that did hit certain price targets and actually have been pretty good performers. So wanted to revisit them, go through them again, kind of see where the experts are rating them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and we will see you in the next one.